Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome into another Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to take a look at three techniques, not really three techniques, three steps that I like to use to blend pretty much anybody or anything into any scene. So if you're creating a, uh, a composite image with a car, with a, with a person, with an animal, with an object, this method will help you a lot. It'll help you achieve really perfect or very close to perfect color match. Uh, it's really effective. It's easy to do once you've kind of done it a time or two, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So without further ado, let's jump into Photoshop now and check this thing out. Well, all right, here we are in Adobe Photoshop, our favorite place in the world, right? And I've got this model and we've isolated her a little bit, but you can see it leaves a little bit to be desired. And back here is just a background that I created, kind of. Uh, what it is is uh, a shot of San Francisco, and then I put this sort of foreground in place and added the bokeh to the background. It's just a bunch of fun stuff there like that. But we're not going to worry about that. We're going to worry about making her look like she actually belongs. And it's going to begin with masking her. Now, instead of dragging you through the whole arduous selected mask and masking process, we're going to go select. We're going to say, hey, load selection because I've already saved the selection here and I'm going to load my model mask and hit OK. And here is the mask that I've already created. And then it's a matter of going layer, layer mask, reveal selection there it is normally i just hit the little mask icon which does the same thing so there we have it we have our object or our model in this case and we've got her masked into place now it looks funky because there's no shadow i could go and add the shadow i kind of want to talk about the shadow later but the shadow down below is it's going to do a lot to make things look like they're blending in uh, but we're not going to play with the shadow right now we'll get back to that later let's focus on the task at hand let's match her up with this scene and here's the way i like to do this or if, there are a lot of different ways you can do it but this way uh, I've learned and I have loved it for the last probably two years now so we begin with the black and white adjustment layer and what the black and white adjustment layer is going to do for us is get rid of all the color obviously but what it does is allows us to really focus on the brightness levels and kind of immediately we can see that she's just too dark right I mean the darkest parts of the background are way brighter than the darkest parts of her and I would venture to say this highlight on the back of her uh, her leg or hamstring here that's probably the brightest part of her and the brightest part of the background, excluding the sun over there in the sky, we're not going to count that, is probably like this cloud over here. And uh, this cloud is not quite as, uh, or it's, it's, it's a bit brighter. It's not quite as dark as the highlight on the back of her leg. So we want to try to match these up a little bit. How do we do that? Well, we can do it by eye. We can use the eyedropper tool. We're going to select the running model layer, and we are going to add a levels adjustment layer. Now, you could use curves. I kind of prefer curves, but considering this is a tutorial, we want to keep it easy for everyone involved. We're going to say, hey, look, clip this to the layer below. We can hit this little icon here. It's a nice little trick. And we can just simply begin. I'm going to take my center slider and I'm going to open her up a little bit. So we're just opening up all those shadows. I'm going to push the highlights over as well. I'm going to open up the, the general midtones of the photo as well. You almost need to make her brighter than you think she needs to be. And let me show you here. Let's drag the info panel out and open this sucker up. And I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool. And let's let's take a little taste here. I shouldn't say taste. That's a little inappropriate for what we're about to do. Let's take a little test here from the back of her leg. And I'm going to set my eyedropper to grayscale. We can see that's a 27. Ignore the 7% for now. And let's hold down shift and click out here for the highlight in the sky. And we'll set this eyedropper to grayscale as well and let me let me shut off the black and white adjustment layer real quick or maybe I should click on the black and white adjustment layer we can see that the bright on the back of her leg is up at about seven percent the bright in the sky is 13 percent so maybe the highlights on her are a little overcooked so let's double click here to open up levels and we will pull back on the highlights a little bit you can see now they're around 13 we can click on the black and white layer and we're 13 against 11 so it's pretty close 11 11 would be that exact match but again that's assuming that we have exactly the brightest spot of her selected and exactly the brightest spot of the background selected. We're just kind of going with generalities here. Now let's uh, go ahead and sample what would be the darkest part of her. Now the shoes I'm not going to count because they're just really dark in general. In fact, if we shut off the black and white adjustment layer, we can see they're pretty much dark gray to charcoal, maybe even black, some would say. I'm instead going to focus on the creases in her clothing here and her little jogging shorts. So I'm going to shift click right in there. And again, I'll set this to grayscale. We can see we got 90%. And then I'll probably go with like one of these dark spots on the buildings back here. So I'm going to shift click right in there. And uh, when I set this to grayscale, we can see that's about 75 against 90. So what we, could, what we could do here with levels, double click again levels, and we could just straight lift our black point so we can lift it. Now, if I go too far, it's going to be kind of bad. 
86% will probably be good for us. So we're at 86 against 74. It's pretty close, but you can see here, if I shut off the black and white adjustment layer, all of a sudden we have a, a radically different photo. Now we can see just how dark she was compared to the scene around her. And I can already hear what you're saying. It still looks really bad. And you're right because we have to adjust two other things. We just adjusted the brightness. That's step one. We also need to adjust saturation and color. So we're going to attack the saturation now, and then we're going to jump in and attack the color, and then we'll kind of assess the whole thing. So here's how we do that. We're going to do saturation now, and we're going to use what's called a saturation mask. So click to add a selective color adjustment layer, and you want to go into each of your color channels here. We'll begin with reds and tune the blacks back to negative 100. So zip through and do this. I'm, I've got it set to absolute as well, not relative. Greens, tune the black back to negative 100 cyans black back to negative 100 if you can get it to stay blues of course back to negative 100 and last but not least magenta is back to negative 100 now you can see what this is doing it's just making the image look bad and that's fine that's what it's supposed to do then we're going to go to the tones the whites the neutrals the blacks so we're going to go whites and here we're going to boost the blacks way up so we're going to do the same for neutrals and we're going to do the same for blacks now to avoid having to do this every single stinking time you come in here, you can hit the little flyout menu. Let me drag this uh, out over here. You can hit the little flyout menu and choose save selective color preset, which is exactly what I've done here. It's the one preset I have here for selective color, sat mask, saturation mask. It's the same thing. So I'm going to redock this over here. If I can get it to dock. If I can get it to dock, there we go. I'm a professional, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. And now what we can do is look at the, the stuff that's black is, well, as you can see here, her shirt is very gray, not a lot of color, and it's very, very dark. So the darker the color appears in the saturation mask, the less saturation there is. The lighter it appears, like her little jogging, I guess, underwear, undershorts, whatever they would be, they're very hot pink. So you can see they come through very bright. So the idea is going to be we want to adjust the saturation of her, her skin tone, etc., to better match what we see here in the saturation mask. So how do we do that? Well, we add another layer to our stack. So for levels here, we'll call this brightness adjust to make maybe something like that. And I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. We're going to use the little clip icon again to clip it to the stack. And this is going to be saturation adjust. All right. And now what you can do is you could just use your master saturation or you could grab the little scrubby tool and we're on the layer beneath the, uh, the selective color saturation mask. So we can click on her skin and just click and drag. If we reduce the saturation in it, you can see it darkens her up. If we increase the saturation, you can see it really brightens her up. Obviously, really bright looks really bad. And sure enough, if we shut off the saturation mask, that's reflected in what we see. So we're going to click on those same red tones and we're going to darken and we want to darken until she kind of looks like she's blending into the scene better. I shut off hue saturation and you can see we're just making that adjustment, making the legs kind of the same brightness as what we're seeing in the background. If I shut off selective color, we can see a before and after. There's before and there's after. So you can see it's really taken the color out of her skin tone. I actually think a little bit more color needs to come out. I'm going to go up to master. I'm not going to use the scrubby tool for this. I'm going to get rid of some of the saturation overall because that's going to include getting rid of some of the pink saturation, some of the saturation from her hair, etc. I think that blends a little bit better. I'm going to close properties. Let's shut off selective color. And we can see a before and after with our hue saturation layer. So it's going to make a quite a bit of a difference for us. So that's our saturation adjustment. Now we need to adjust colors. So how do we find the colors? Well, we basically create a, a luminosity gray that's sort of a difference gray. It's really luminosity gray layer. We're going to do that by going layer, new fill layer, solid color. And I'm going to call this color adjust because that's how we're kind of doing things here. And actually, I could have clicked uh, the little icon. I don't know if you noticed. Layer, new fill layer, solid color. I can tick the icon, use previous layer to create clipping mask, which is going to clip it right to the stack that we've got happening already. So let's go color adjust. Bam. And we're clipped right on top of her. Now you can see it looks pretty bad. And actually, I shouldn't have done that, but it's easy enough to unclip. We're going to set the brightness level to 50%, give us some 50% gray. And I am going to just hold down my alter option key and hover between those layers. You see that little cross uh, unclip icon? That's what we want uh, because this is our testing layer here. Uh, so we're going to set this to a blend mode of luminosity. 
And you can see here, we've got uh, some very subtle things going on. And maybe to make this a little bit easier to see, you could add like a vibrance saturation layer and boost saturation a lot if you're having trouble seeing it, right? This is just another test layer. We, we're going to delete this in a little bit. Basically, what we want to do is we want to match her color to the colors around her. We can see we've got a heavy yellow cast, reddish, greenish cast as well in her skin. So how do we get rid of that? Again, this is an area where you can use levels, you can use curves, you can use color balance. There's so many different ways to do this. I'm going to go with curves because we already did something with levels and kind of introduced you to levels. So let's take the next step in the adjustment layer hierarchy and go with curves, the granddaddy of all the adjustment layers, one of the most powerful adjustments here in Photoshop. We want to make sure that we clip it to the stack. So we're going to clip it. And this, of course, is going to be our color adjust. See, I got, I got all mixed up here. This is just a regular color fill layer. So we're going to leave that as color fill. Color adjust is what's going to adjust her. So I'm going to zoom in a little here. And remember, if I shut off the gray layer, we've way overcooked the image. We've added a ton of saturation, but it's just to illustrate the effect. I don't usually add a heavy, vibrant saturation layer, but it can be helpful when you don't see a huge difference. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to target her skin first, and there's yellow. So if I click here on my RGB drop-down menu, I've got red, green, blue. Now, the opposite of red is cyan. The opposite of green is magenta. The opposite of blue is yellow. So we're going to go to blue. And we can use the finger scrubby again. And we can say, hey, look, all right, there's just a lot of yellow in here. So I'm going to push this up to get some blue into there. And look at how it begins changing to kind of match everything around it. Now, if you look at her face, a little bit of magenta happening up there. So maybe remember magenta opposite of green. So we'll go to that green channel. Maybe we'll pull down a little bit there. Maybe actually we'll push up on it a little bit. That's what I meant. And let's try going into the red channel. Let's reduce the reds overall in the skin as well. That's going to add a little cyan to what we've got going on here. We can check here down here on her legs. Make sure that's looking right. We're going to go back to the blue channel. We need a little bit more blue down here. So I'm going to pull blue into these brighter portions of the leg. And also maybe over here we need a little bit more blue. And you're just looking to generally get this as close as you can I'm going to play with this green a little bit more. Maybe it does need a little bit more magenta and maybe not so much green. I don't know. The whole point is you can really play with it. Let's go back to blue. I think, yeah, those are the really dark areas of her hair that still have a lot of yellow in them. You see that? See how there's bits of yellow? And down here is targeting blue and yellow in the darkest part of the image. So what I'll do is I'll pull that straight up to get some blue into the darker parts of the image. Something kind of like that. And maybe actually we need to do the same for our highlights just to really help them blend a little better. All right, let's shut off our saturation and color fill layer and zoom out. And we can see what this color change has done for us. I'm going to close my properties and info panel. We can delete all four of our sort of control layers and we can break down what we just did. Here is the, the sort of shot out of camera that we began with. And then we adjust the brightness first. We adjust the saturation and then we adjust the color to make it all match. And then it's as simple as going back into the background. And you can do this however you like. I usually use little ovals and blur them. You can use a little motion blur in there. That really helps you kind of get your shadow nice and realistic. Layer it up if you have to and create the shadow. And it looks pretty good. Now, it's still very low contrast because we're building out the composite. We're not maybe crazy concerned about the contrast right now but since we've got our our composite together we've got an image in place we're ready to add a little color grading and contrast and things like that so you can do that pretty easily we could do something as simple as a color lookup table we can go with maybe crisp warm that's going to add some color and contrast you can see what that does we may need something that's kind of darkening it down a little bit so we could add a curves adjustment layer here and just pull down on the brights darken it up a little bit maybe add a, a little anchor handle or a point to the middle of the tone there we go something like that and this is where as you color grade you can continue looking at the model right as i make this dark look at what's sort of happening to her the dark parts of her are really getting dark to the point where it's kind of unrealistic and remember back when we were playing with levels we really should have pushed that black point made it a lot lighter so let's do that now and when we do that, we can really make things blend a bit better. The other thing is the bulk of our light is coming from lights that are in theory being fired at and around the surface on which she's running. So her legs up to kind of her hips 
will sort of naturally be a little bit brighter than she is if this was like a true, like she was really there in this environment. So again, to match the brightness, one thing we may do is come into this brightness adjust layer, select the mask and grab our gradient tool, just a simple black to white gradient. I'm going to zoom way out here because I'll just hold down shift and start way up near the top and just drag out a very subtle gradient. See how see how much that darkened up the top of the image? See, and that's all we did was we added a gray fade to the mask. So something like that can really help the image just be pulled together. Now, maybe the gray is a little too strong, and if, if it is, you can just make sure you select the layer mask. Go image adjustments, levels. We're now applying a levels adjustment directly to the mask, and we'll do what we've always done. We'll just lift the black point. Lift the black point and just watch her and see what's happening. See, there's before we made our adjustment, there's after. We infuse a little bit more light there into the top side of her, but you can see that mask is just really helping the top half of her blend with the light you would expect from the background from sort of the top half of the scene. So there you have it. We got started with this image here where she wasn't cut out. Well, I didn't really show you how to cut her out, just create a mask and select a mask and fun stuff like that. But we cut her out, applied a mask, threw some levels on that or brightened her up, matched saturation, matched color, and then did some color grading and, and lightness work. And you have an image where she looks like she properly belongs uh, in place just like that. Well, there you have it, folks. You can see it's pretty simple, pretty easy, right? You isolate the brightness, isolate the saturation, isolate those color tones and correct them one by one by one. And you will have pretty good results almost all the time with a little practice and continuing to do it and uh, looking at your work and trying to get better and better and better. You will get better and better and better. And it'll be a great thing. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to the channel, hit the red button, but don't just hit the red subscribe button there on YouTube. Hit the little bell icon so you get a little notification every time I post a Photoshop tutorial just like this one. I really appreciate the support, guys. I love you so very stinking much uh, for taking a look at these adjustment layers and layer masks and everything from a black and white adjustment layer to a saturation mask to you name it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. At TutVid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.